going on? It's me, Rob, again. I'm trying to focus this where I can try to step back from it uh, today. Uh, the, uh, the next video I'm going to do is called Martian Steel. Uh, Martian Steel is something that I, I, I firmly live my life by. And uh, it just goes to show about how, how people uh, train, I mean, people that advertise the commercials on TV or, or somebody could train your subliminal brain and put stuff in your mind that, that really isn't there, that really came from nowhere, and there's no proof, but they put it in your mind, and you start to think it, and, you, you know, people kind of, you know, it, it steers your life a little bit more, you know, and, and, and the, the title behind this, Martian Steel, is I actually heard this from Tony Robbins, uh, when, uh, I don't know if you know him, he was a really huge guy, he was in Shallow Well, kind of, uh, uh, got shallow hell to believe that, you know, that, hey, you know what, everybody he sees that's big is skinny. Well, that's basically what he's kind of doing. He's trading, he's trading his mind, you know. And, and so, so that, that's why it's the title of this Martian Steel. And, and here's the story behind the Martian Steel. If you were going to go out and uh, you were out at dinner with your friends and you're at this big banquet hall and you're sitting here with dinner having a good time and you're surrounded by green Martians or surrounded by Martians in there, you know, and so, so, you know, you're getting ready to go to the bathroom and your friend tells you, you guy or a lady, hey, watch your purse, watch your wallet, because Martians steal, you know. And then, you know, so you go, you go to the bathroom, whatever, do your thing, you come back, you get ready to go home and you leave and realize you forgot your purse, your wallet or whatever, your camera inside this banquet hall. What's the first thing you're going to think about? The first thing in your mind is going to come to your mind is Martian steal, you know, because not you can... It's not proven fact. It's not anything other than somebody said it. You know, hell, you know, we don't know if they steal yet. You know, we apparently we got their flying saucer, so you know, apparently we're the ones that took something from them, right? No, but but uh, it's that that was from the bolts, fully the one in the uh, ah, was that uh, that place in Kentucky? Anyways, uh, you know, so that that's my whole theory behind it. And some of the other ways that show that that how this can affect people is I was at a sporting event one time, and at the sporting event. Uh, the two children that would come up to compete, they would put a green, uh, a green little thing on his back and one put a red little uh, ribbon on his back so they could decipher the points by green or red, you know. And when this little child was running out to, the, to, to his competition, I heard the parent lean over and says, hey, get the green one because you always win with the green one. So what is that saying? Is that telling the kid that the kid can never win with the red one? So that that uh, competition, the kid did get the green one, the kid won. So it solidified the fact that the parent says, hey, if you get the green one, you win. So automatically the next time the kid goes out and gets the red one, the red one is the kid's already a step behind the game because he's thinking he don't got the green one that's going to win. So was, I was, man, I was so upset. I was so upset. How can you instill it in the child's mind at, at such a young age? And they didn't mean to instill it or nothing, but it's like that little superstitious stuff that when people say and it goes in your mind and you believe it, you know. If you're going out for a job and say, man, I heard the so-and-so department's hiring. I'm going to go out there. And then your friend says, well, it's hard to get in or you don't get in if you're a certain race. I mean, you're letting that just completely hold you back. Just go for it, you know. You know, uh, face your fears. I mean, whatever the fear is, face it and then conquer it. You know, if they say, well, you know, it, it's hard to become an astronaut. Yes, it's hard to become an astronaut. You know that. I know that. But you know what? We never took the training, so we really don't know. It's just from what they tell us. Well, why be scared about it? Go for it. You know, and, and one more thing that it, it drives me nuts to hear, and I heard it growing up a lot, and I, you know, I mean, I heard it from different people, and I'm not going to say that ethnicity or nationality, but behind it is when one parent tells the young child, life is going to be hard to you because you're fill in the blank. Life is going to be hard to you because you're whatever nationality, you know, and when we're in America now, so life's going to be harder because you're this. You know, life is not going to be harder because of their nationality, you know. Don't you put that in their head. Society down the road may put that in somebody else's head, but don't you be the one to put that in a little child's head. You tell all these children they're all alike and you could all be somebody. You could all be doctors, lawyers, astronauts, anything, you know, but, but just fuel the child's brain with that. Not Don't fuel the child's brain. So whenever a child does anything now or you're talking to a child or anybody, just realize what you're putting in their head or what you might be holding somebody else back from. I always say wish the best for everybody. So this is another example. Wish the best for everybody. All right? Uh, don't forget, 
Martians don't steal, and you come up with your own conclusion yourself. Thank you. Bye-bye.